In this video, we're going to be talking about a village cricket match by A.G. McDonald's. A village cricket match is a comical, humorous story in which A.G. McDonald recounts a cricket match played between the inhabitants of a village of a small village called Fordenden and some Londoners from England. Cricket, as we know, is the national game of England, whose capital is London. Written in a humorous style, this extract of village cricket match is taken from the novel England, Their England by A.G. MacDonald. The two teams playing cricket in a village cricket match are one of the teams was a group of gentlemen from London uh, who were playing under the captainship of William Hodge. On the other hand was the local team, the local villagers of Fordenden, under the captainship of the Fordenden Baker. The villagers of Fordenden came and flocked around the cricket ground, leaving all their words and waiting patiently for the match to start. Mr. Hodge, the captain of the gentleman from London, won the bat and he decided to bat first. The Londoners were batting and the locals were fielding. Now when they counted the players, the Londoners had only nine players. Two were absent. So Mr. Hodge asked the opponent team to lend them two players for fielding. The captain of the Fordenden team agreed and called two of his players saying that they should field for both the teams and bat for none. On hearing this, the two players were enraged. To be a fielder the whole day was, would be a tiresome job. So the two players got disappointed, got angry and then they left to go home. Luckily for the London team and Mr. Hodge, the two players turned up. But there was a third person with them who swore that he would play for the Londoners. So the Fordenden team had to bring in the two local Achilles, the two great guys from their village to play for Fordenden. Now including all these players, instead of having 11, 11 players on both sides, they had 12, 12 players. The opening batsmen for the London team were Mr. James Livingston and Boone. Boone was a huge man weighing about 16 stone and wearing a Cambridge blue. Donald, one of the spectator, when he saw Boone, that big guy coming in Cambridge blue, all dressed up to play cricket, he wanted to laugh. But then he decided that, okay, I'm a foreigner, I know nothing about cricket, whereas these people, they are from England. It's their national game. So who am I to judge how to play cricket? Who am I to judge what is cricket and what is not? And then he controlled his laughter. The Fordenden Baker was the captain of the Fordenden team, so he asked all his players to scatter around, to be a good fielder and be in their position and be alert. So all the players took their position in the ground. Now we may be imagining that, okay, they're gonna play cricket, so the ground must be cleared of all the grasses and it must be a big ground, but no. A.G. McDonald says that the ground was not a very big ground and there were thickets, there were bushes, there were dandelions growing everywhere. So the Fordenden players took their position as fielders among the thick grasses. To add to our disappointment, the ground in which these people were playing a village cricket match was an uneven ground. It was not a flat ground. Let me show you. Let us assume that this is a ground that they are playing and you know grasses growing everywhere, tall tall grasses growing everywhere. One wicket here and the other wicket is here the batsman will be somewhere around here with his bat you know trying to hit the ball when the, when the bowler throws the ball and the ground is such that it falls back and there was a fielder here a Fordenden player here maybe a fielder somewhere around here 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 and the fielder who stood here was in such a position that he did not see anything that was going on on the ground, that was going on in the game. He had no idea. He just had to stand here and he would see the bowler, the blacksmith coming down in a very smart way, taking the ball and then running 
smartly running ferociously up to throw the ball that was all he saw he could only see the bowler coming to take his run and running furiously to throw the ball and sometimes when the batman hits the ball sometimes he would see the ball flying up above his head and that was all this fielder could see so this lesson a village cricket match is a humorous story but without being able to imagine what is going on it can be pretty boring but if you can be in the game and uh, follow up with whatever E.G. McDonald is saying it is pretty funny you will see as we continue with the story so as we have learned the ground is not an official cricket ground not a very proper ground where cricket could be played and as we have seen through that diagram we saw that obviously the batsman will not be able to see the bowler coming to throw the ball unless of course he reaches the wicket and is about to throw the ball the first ball thrown by the blacksmith of Ordenden, the bowler came at such a speed that mr james livingston did not see the ball and even the fielders did not see the ball so the blacksmith must be a fast bowler that even the fielders did not see the ball even the batsman did not see the ball and it bounced and crossed the boundary so it was four buys four runs the village cricket empire signaled that it was a four buys and some of the onlookers drank out of celebration while some drank out of bitterness either way they drank the second ball bounced very closely to the batsman and hit the wicketkeeper's stomach. The third ball went swiftly very close to Mr. Livingston's ear, like a flying bird, like a flying partridge, and went past the boundary without hitting the ground, without touching the ground. So it was a six. The fourth ball came like a bullet and hit the bail, uh, hit the wicket and then mr james livingston was announced as out so without even touching the ball he scored 10 runs now the score was 10 runs one wicket 10 runs and one person out the next batsman was the professor but the ball hit his ear and he was injured and taken to the three horseshoes now the three horseshoes is the rest house near the ground where the players were sitting and other spectators were also sitting and they were drinking probably just a waiting shed a, a resting shed three horseshoes remember next player was mr harcourt but this guy mr harcourt he hit his own wicket with his bat even before the sixth ball was delivered even before the ball was thrown he was maybe excited and nervous he hit his own wicket and he was out now it was 10 runs and two wickets two out and one retired because of injury the injured was the professor who got hit on the left ear now they changed bowlers the instead of the blacksmith the rate collector had to throw the ball and when the rate collected through the ball the batsman Booney, who was a massive guy got stumped out that means the bowler hit the stump donald the curious spectator who was watching Booney closely because Booney was wearing a cambridge blue he was shocked because he had high expectation on Booney, and then he was such a big guy and then he looked like he could play the game but he was stunned out so he was a little disappointed but later he realized that Booney got the blue cambridge because of rowing and not cricket the score was 10 runs three wickets and one retired due to injury now the next player was interesting because he was small and quiet man and quite simple and finely dressed and he was seen talking to the other people while traveling through the Shara Blank, that is the bus, or even drinking with some of the people. Donald had been watching him talking to other people, drinking with other people. His gentleness made him look very weak and fragile. And the way he was holding his bat, it looked like a fast bowler would bowl his bat away from his hand because maybe he was 
holding the bat in such a stylish manner. The spectator Donald asked someone who this man was and learned that he was none other than the famous novelist Robert Southcott. This fragile, thin, finely dressed and celebrity-like looking young man was none other than Robert Southcott. He held his bat like a celebrity holding a flute or a fan. The captain, Mr. Hodge, shouted from the three horseshoes, Bobby, keep up your end. Runs doesn't matter. Bobby, don't worry. Just play safe and don't worry about taking runs. Of course, Mr. Southcott replied, very well, Bill. Donald, the spectator, was so excited by this conversation between the two London players. Mr. Southcott hit the rate collector's ball and the ball flew over the three horseshoes and it was a six. The urchins, the village little boys, ran excitedly to look for the ball and brought it back to the rate collector. The red collector threw the ball again and Mr. Southcott hit it into the cellar bar, into the three horseshoes. It was another six. The next ball was another skillful and calculated delivery from the red collector. Southcott hit the ball into the air and into the stream. The urchins this time fished out the ball with a long bamboo pole and an old bucket. The rate collector started to be a little worried because he was a respectable person in the village among the locals but now that all his three special deliveries were tackled by South God and scoring six, he feared that it would become difficult for him to collect the installment money from the uh, people because now his reputation was at stake. Another six and his reputation would come to an end. That was what he was afraid of. But luckily, the umpire called over. That means the rate collector delivered six balls and another baller should take his place. The rate collector, the baller, was only relieved, happy that, okay, now I'm safe. And then he handed the ball to the free forester. The blacksmith watched how Mr. Southcott took all the deliveries with ease and was already very, very angry. You know, in the beginning, the, it was the blacksmith who injured one person and his ball was so fast. He was such a fast bowler that people could not see his ball coming. He was getting ready to take Southcott down. And finally, when he was given the chance to ball, the blacksmith looked at Mr. Southcott spat on his hands, swung his arms three, four times, held the ball in his big palm and went beyond the ground and disappeared into the bro, you know, getting ready to take his run and throw the ball at Mr. Southcott. And when he started to take his run to throw the ball at Mr. Southcott, the ground shook violently. The frightened birds flew away. The butterflies were alarmed. And the blacksmith rose from the ground and ran towards the wicket. The, the running and the appearance of the blacksmith is compared to the appearance of the goddess Venus. And the way he was charging to throw the ball at Mr. Southcott is compared to a battle charge, the charge of Von Bridolf's. Mr. Harcourt, who was drinking and watching the players, he was drunk and suddenly shouted, No ball! When a match is going on, there are people around, some are notorious, some are naughty, and some are seriously watching, and some, some are like totally into the game, whereas some just get drunk and pass rubbish commands. Mr. Harcourt was one such guy who hit his own wicket and got out. It, it was like a suicide for him and then he came out he started drinking and suddenly he shouted no ball out of nowhere just for fun but this shout of no ball by mr harcourt let the bowler the blacksmith to get confused but he was running at such a great speed that he could not stop himself or he could not stop the ball from getting out of his hand and the ball hit one of his fellow players who was in the position of third sleep you know there are there are fielders who are waiting there to catch the ball 
if one cannot catch the other will catch one cannot catch the other will catch so it hit the third slip and this person this fielder who was in the third slip started to hop out of pain out of sheer pain he started to hop and fell down on the tickets on the on the bushes even the bowler the blacksmith himself fell down heavily in the center of the wicket and threw up a cloud of dust because he was a massive guy mr hodge the captain of the london team came out of the three horseshoes and looked at the scoreboard and he was happy and he shouted at mr saltcott you needn't play safe anymore bob play your game feel free to do whatever you want play your game mr saltcott continued to play carefully for around a quarter of an hour that's like 15 minutes and finally was declared out it was 69 runs and six out next batsman to enter was the american journalist shakespeare pullock now when we hear the word american we we just feel like okay freestyle when it is a londoner it is always like manners rules laws but when it is american it's freestyle according to my opinion so when the next batsman entered he was american journalist shakespeare pollock he was intensely active and alert and he was a young man and he was called to play in the game in the last minute and he maybe he had no idea about how to play cricket so mr harcourt and mr hodge explained to him how cricket is played donald the spectator our spectator was listening carefully to what Mr. Hodge and Mr. Harcourt were explaining to Mr. Pullock and he thought that maybe they'll mention about team spirit but they did not. They only taught Mr. Pullock how to play cricket, that's all. But the spectator Donald thought that okay fine but maybe they just they, they're just used to talking about team spirit all the time that they find it unnecessary to repeat so mr pullock walked into the ground and was ready to bat we see normally that the cricket batsmen they put the bat on the ground and they get ready but this person mr pullock he did not put his bat on the ground he was already getting ready to hit the ball and when the ball was delivered he suddenly hit the ball with his bat and threw his bat on the ground and started to run as fast as possible everyone on the ground and off the ground were silent nobody moved and mr pollock was surprised he stopped and looked around and then started to laugh he laughed out loudly saying, ah, darn me. Well, well, I thought I was playing baseball. And he smiled uneasily. I'm sure you must have seen how baseball is played, you know, like in the movies. They have this baseball bat and then they put it in the air. And when the ball is delivered, they hit the ball. They throw their bat and they run. But that is not so in cricket. No wonder he is an American journalist. An American so through this we realized that mr pullock was mr shakespeare pullock was confused whether he was playing cricket or baseball he was confused between cricket and baseball on this humorous note the extract in your syllabus comes to an end and there we come to an end to our short explanation of ag mcdonald's a village cricket match i'll see you in the next video thank you and yeah thank you for suggesting this video